Hey, what is up guys? I am finally able to make a video after a crazy, crazy convention weekend. So as you guys could have guessed, I'm back from C2E2 uh, and I got a bunch of pickups to show. So uh, as usual with C2E2, it was an insanely busy convention for me. Uh, I got there about 7 a.m. Chicago time, so it's outside of my, outside of my time zone. Um, Friday morning and it was pretty much there until the end of Sunday of all days so usually I don't spend that long on Sunday but um, I guess just to give a mini review of the convention I think it was my second favorite C2E2 ever so the original in 2010 it's probably still my favorite just because in terms of you know meeting creators and all that stuff like big names it was fairly easy but on the flip side there wasn't really a lot uh, of crowd or fans there at the time whereas this year they had actually quite a bit of you know drawing power in terms of celebrity and comic creator but there was a lot of people there especially Saturday um, that being said the artist alley they need to space that thing out next year it was just I mean you couldn't walk the aisles Friday or Saturday Friday wasn't too bad it was a little full but Saturday as you could probably guess, it was just, I mean, they had some wider open aisles, but they didn't, they put a few of the right artists in those aisles, but there were a few that, like, they just jammed in. Like, I think it was aisle B was the number one worst aisle in the whole building. Uh, I think you had, like, Alan Davis and Mark Farmer at one end. I'm trying to think of who else. I think Tom King was at the other end. Like, yeah, so you, like, there was a small break in the middle, but I don't know what they were thinking with that layout. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, it was probably one of the better Artist Alley lineups they had had. Um, <clears throat> I don't really do the celebrity stuff a lot. I went to one panel with uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy, like Dave Bautista, and then uh, I always forget Sean Gunn's brother's name, but he was there too, the guy who plays the uh, the other guy on that spaceship. That <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little congested right now. I'm forgetting stuff. Uh, but anyway... Um, there were a lot of other celebrities that were a big draw for people, but usually I just go for the comics and the creators and that type of stuff. Uh, but like I said, uh, besides a little bit of the uh, overcrowding in certain areas, um, I had a blast, of course. So uh, I'll just go ahead and get started with the haul then, because it's going to be a little bit probably, so just warn you guys now. I guess before I also get started, I wanted to plug the contest one more time. Uh, we are at 126 subscribers so far, so like I said, if I get the 150, uh, prize number two will be created. So I'll put the link below for the original contest entry so you guys can see what the prize is because I don't want to go too much into that. Uh, but I have five entered so far. Uh, so if you guys are interested in entering, just go ahead and put a link in the contest video and then we'll get you put on this list here. So um, now that's, that's out of the way. Uh, the other best thing about this convention is for the first time in I think four, maybe longer years, DC Comics was back. And on top of it, you had Image, Dark Horse, and pretty much any other major creator actually had representation there. I think that's a first for C2E2, because even in the original, I don't think Image was there. And, I mean, usually there's at least one missing. This is the first year they've actually had all of them. So, with that, it comes free stuff. So, <laughs> Uh, just this little stack alone is just the books. I've got more over here of just stuff I got for free. So uh, DC came out swinging with free stuff. They hired like multiple people just to walk around their booth handing out stuff. Uh, I wish Marvel would have handled theirs, but they just had one person with one table telling everyone to go to the front of the table. Whereas DC had like four or five people with four or five different books. So, and these will probably end up in the contest uh, as well. I'll probably just put them in the, the main box, but I've got... Three copies of this DC metal cover, so I thought this was pretty cool. So every time they ask me to get one, I'm like, well, I do have a contest coming up, so I want to make sure, you know, I can get these to the people who are participating. So I'll probably put one of these in box one, and I'm hoping we get the 150 so I can put another one in box two, and then three goes to me. <laughs> so unless we get to 200, then we'll see. Uh, so I don't know. If anyone else who did this cover, let me know. I haven't, uh, this is such a new book. And there's, I didn't really see any artist markings on it. And obviously, Comic Book DB probably doesn't have this yet. Uh, but they were just handing this out. I'm curious to see who the cover artist this because it's actually a wraparound cover. So it's a really nice cover for just a convention handout. And I haven't seen it on any of the other variant covers. And then they just had this as well, which, like I said, I'll probably put this inside one of the packages as well. Uh, just a sampler of the new stuff coming out. They had like three cop or I had managed to get three copies of this. They're handing this out every single day a bunch of times. So and I won't go too much on the other stuff. But just some of the DC's essentials you guys have probably seen on the dollar racks at your stores. Um, 
so pretty much, you know, I would if I was waiting in line to meet an artist or a writer at their booth, they'd just be like, here you go. I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> so, uh, and at Marvel, like I said, they're handing out free stuff too. So I think this is the most interesting thing I got for free at the Marvel booth. It was like some paper dolls of the champions. So I thought it was cool. They mixed it up a little bit. Um, not something you see every day. And appeals too, you know. Not me, so I'm glad they're appealing to uh, children, that type of stuff, to get them hooked into comic style so they can, you know, start building their collection and all that good stuff. Uh, but I thought that was kind of neat. So they have their usual annual calendar. And then you guys probably see this for free at your shops. Yeah. Man, like I said, I might mix in some of these in the uh, contest as well because I really don't need that much as you guys can maybe hint at back there eagle-eyed viewers if you will i guess i have completely capped this rack behind me it is filled top to bottom i left some breathing room in the boxes but now i have all the stuff i pulled for c2e2 and indiana comic-con to work back in those boxes so i'm trying to slow down let's just say so and then beyond that sorry i'm having to put stuff on the floor i got so much stuff in front of me here uh posters they, they were giving away grifter masks at the DC booth. I thought this was really neat. I think somehow the, the lady gave me two, but then I ended up with one again because a buddy really wanted one. So I, there's a grifter mask. I I didn't know he was still relevant, but good for him. Fantastic Four posters from Marvel. So I got a couple of these. I'll probably toss in the contests. Um, nice big Doomsday Clock poster. I won't fold out now. Uh, pretty big Venomized poster. It actually folds out. It comes even cooler poster, I think. Like I said, I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff. I will fold this out. Maybe I might end up, like I said, I really don't have room for posters, so I'll probably just end up putting these posters inside the contest entries. Then whatever, this is, this might be kind of a neat poster just because it describes the Infinity Stones and that stuff. So, And I thought this was kind of weird. Um, I don't know if they overprinted the lenticular covers for the Punisher 218 for the Marvel Legacy. I thought it was a free book at first, but it's actually just the exterior cover to the lenticular variant of Punisher 218. So, never seen anything like this. I just thought it was really interesting, and they were giving away for free, so why not pick it up? So, yeah, there's that. This is the last freebie I think I got. Um, and then probably the coolest thing Marvel had was, for some reason, Friday at 4... PM, which is kind of a dead zone for, in my opinion, for Friday comic conventions because everyone's either leaving or, you know, out of money at that point or going to a panel. But Marvel decided to have their Young Guns signing at that time, which means basically the five Young Guns artists they had there, they had a signing for them. I'll get to my sign books in a moment. Uh, but they're also giving away as an exclusive to that signing this nice little print, uh, which I got to meet Javier Garon, Pepe Larez. Uh, Mike Del Mundo, Aaron Cuter, and Marco Keketo was there. I guess it's actually pronounced Keketo according to C.B. Sabolsky, so I guess it's Keketo instead of Chichetto. So there we go. Uh, but I was just blown away, especially like Mark Keketo being as a part of the signing. I figured he was so popular that this would have been a huge line. And I got there like maybe 10 minutes before the signing just because I heard they were giving something like this away, and I was third in line. There was hardly anyone behind me, so... Um, I thought that was a pretty cool opportunity to meet five artists at once, and especially at a convention that big, it's kind of hard to get, you know, five stuff, five items signed by five artists. It can take some time, but waiting ten minutes in line and getting instantly up there was pretty awesome. Uh, so this is one of two prints I bought, and my next print I really liked. Uh, I got this from an artist named Jen Bartell. I believe did I put her on my uh, underrated artist list? If I didn't, I should have. If I did, well, good for past me. <laughs> but anyway, I saw she had this on Twitter. Uh, a while back, and I was really hoping she'd bring him the C2E2, and luckily she did. And actually, a lot of the people in front of me and her little bit of audience going on Friday bought these two, but this is the uh, Girl Gang Overwatch print, so I really like the game Overwatch, <laughs> even though none of my friends group at the con did. I got made fun of mercifully for buying it, or mercilessly. They didn't have any mercy when I bought this, believe me. Uh, but I really like this print. It has all my favorite characters from Overwatch on it because the, the ladies steal that game, believe me. So I had to get it for Mercy at least because that's my character. Uh, but unfortunately I haven't, didn't have a frame for this because the frames I bought were too small so I'll have to buy something nice for this. So look up Jim Bartell if you don't know who she is. She's a very excellent artist and I'm really happy at least she brought these prints and I got one good print. Don't know where I'm going to hang it yet because I have no room but we'll figure out something. Alright, so let me clean this up and then I've talked in my past videos about sketches and stuff. I really, I mean, C2E2, I love it, but it's kind of a hard con to get sketches at. 
um, just because it's so busy and you know you ca it's kind of like a chess game that you have to make a good first move Friday morning in order to really score the sketch you want. Fortunately, that didn't work out for me this year, uh, so I kind of just put my sketchbook out for the weekend because I was taking a train by the end of the weekend and I didn't want to bang it, haul it around on hour ride one way hour long train ride. So I just settled for. Uh, the sketch cover, um, trying to think of the guy's name. I think it was Rico Renzi, uh, the colorist for Spider Gwen. Just had forty dollar sketch covers he was doing, so and he was doing these on the spot too. So I figured forty bucks this wasn't too bad. Uh, not one hundred percent familiar with all of his work, but I was like, oh, it look, kind of looks cool, and I wanted to get some piece of art to hang on my wall in terms of an actual sketch. So I was pretty happy with this. Um, so once again, that is the colorist for Spider Gwen. So. And he supplied the book, too, which I thought was pretty nice. Usually they want you to bring your own, so there's that. Um, and then my favorite thing to do, you know, cons like this, there's so many artists and stuff. I, I like to go, instead of trying to, you know, pay top dollar for commissions and stuff, sometimes the best thing you can do at a larger convention is just to go buy a sketchbook or, you know, an ash can, whatever the artist has, and just kind of support them a little bit. Um, and actually, his first one was free. I was surprised he wasn't charging for this because I was prepared to pay for it. Um... This is uh, Jerry Duggan's newest book coming out, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's already out or not, uh, but it's called Dead Rabbit. He was just supplying these at his uh, little booth there. So, I, you know, he just gave this to me for free and didn't have to ask for it. So I really appreciated that. Um, so there's that. And then this one I did want to pay for. It's one of my, it was one of my planned purchases. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with what Rob Gilroy's work. He does, chew, he did chew, I should say. Um, Chu is just an excellent image comic. If you guys haven't read it, absolutely go seek it out. Go out of your way. At least get the first trade. See what you think. Um, if it's for you, it's for you. I think you'll really like it a lot. Or you won't like it at all. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, but he has this book coming out July 2018. It's called Farmhand. And he was selling these like advanced ash can editions. Uh, and that's like the first half of the first issue. Uh, so I thought this was, would be a pretty neat item. I really like Rob Gillery. I wanted to support him and his new book, so I paid 10 bucks for that. Um, next up, there's a ton of Jenny Frizen fans in the community, so I had to get something from her. Um, this is She had like nine volumes of this Judge Books by their cover. For some reason, I got the ninth. I just, for some reason, I bought the newest one she had. I probably should have got volume one, just because, I mean, I, I, this is a great volume, don't get me wrong, but I actually have like 90% of the covers in this already, but, you know, I I definitely wanted to give her a few bucks, especially for selling the books I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, of course, there's her signature right there. All right, so the last two I actually got, like, when I bought these, the artist actually was like, hey, let me give you a little tiny signature, or, well, they signed it, obviously, but they also did a little bit of a sketch show. Uh, it took me a little bit to find him in that buried aisle B an artist alley, but here's a John Timms sketchbook. He's, like, uh, I guess the secondary artist on Harley Quinn behind Chad Harden. Uh, but he also was nice enough just to put a nice little Harley in there. I didn't have to ask for it. He's just like, here, give me that book, and he drew this in there. Because, yeah, I think he kind of felt bad. He was buried in that. Like, Saturday, I figured I would have had to wait in a little bit of line for John Timms. Because, you know, Harley Quinn is obviously a popular book. And I figured there would have been a little, there was like no one in his booth because, I mean, people were just shoving trying to get through that aisle. So I, I kind of felt bad for him too. So I wanted to make sure I bought something from him just to support him a little bit. And then probably my favorite sketchbook purchase of the whole show is, it's called Sequoia by Tula Lote. Once again, I don't think I put her in my underrated artist list as a part of my contest video, but I should have. Uh, she is, in my opinion, extremely underrated. I think she's going to have be even more successful one day uh, once she gets a little bit more mainstream work out there. Uh, but uh, she's an absolute sweetheart, just to say the least. Um, I believe she said she came from Northern Leeds. Uh, and then when she got there Friday morning, they lost her luggage. <laughs> so basically, the only thing she had on her were 20 of these sketchbooks, um, a couple of these nice little miniature prints she brought, and then I think yeah, she luckily she brought her art portfolio with her, so she'd at least sell pages to sell one page and then go buy deodorant and eat. So I felt extremely bad for her. Um, but on top of that, she was super nice and just super grateful to you know anyone even came up to her table. Uh, so she was probably like you know one of my favorite artist to fan interactions I had the whole show. She was absolutely nice and <laughs> anytime she releases a book I'll definitely be buying it. But she was also nice enough just to do a little quick pencil sketch in each one of her uh, art books she did. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So she actually drew this one right here. Uh, if it's not clear on my crappy phone video. Sorry about that. So 
And of course she signed a number in it as well. So luckily she did find her luggage. So she ended up actually having stuff to sell at the con. Because these things went quick. <laughs> so I think my, my buddy who was with me at the time as well. Uh, he he kind of just showed up at the show. So I was in that line. And he's like, oh my god, a Mondo artist. And he, I mean, she also does like Mondo posters and stuff. So uh, absolutely. Tula Lote, look her up. She's awesome. So glad to have that, of course. So next up. I guess let's go into my pickups next. So, yeah, I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. <laughs> uh, so, the first one, this was, uh, these first two actually are the um, the Image exclusive C2E2 books. So, I bought Analog Number 1 and got signed by Jerry Duggan. Uh, pretty good book. I heard about it, I think, on Comic Vantage's channel. Um, so, if you guys like Jerry Duggan's work, I would highly recommend supporting him on this book. I don't go too much into that now because i got a lot to show. I haven't read this one yet, but... Uh, I heard it was pretty good from some other uh, people in the community. And actually, for some reason, this is already selling for like 40, 50 bucks online. So I was like, well, I'm not for 10 bucks, I'm not going to miss out on uh, a solo number one. They had a bunch of copies. So, like I said, I was a little surprised to see it was going for a little bit on eBay, like most conventions do right off the gate. Uh, but I decided, you know, instead of missing out on it, I may as well just pay 10 bucks, see what it is, and it'll be what it will be, I guess. Uh, so, those are pretty much, I think, the only con variants I bought. I thought about getting some of the DC ones, but day one, that line was just huge. I really didn't want to pay 15 bucks for a book. I just kind of didn't care about. I'd rather get a you know an image number one and support you know the writer or artist I like on that book. Uh, so for my pickups, uh, first one, I've been looking for this book for a while. Uh, Web of Spider-Man number one. I've always liked that cover, especially. Um, I've just never seen a decent price on it. Luckily, I paid seven bucks, which it's gone for cheaper. Obviously, I know uh, I've got a newsstand version, but other besides a little bit of spiral, uh, probably needs to be pressed out or what have you. Uh, decent book, could be cleaner, but like I said, pressing and clean. This would be a really good condition book if I ever decide to do something like that with it. Uh, so that's what I've been looking for for a little while. I think I paid ten dollars for this. I've always really liked this cover. Uh, Captain Marvel number three. So I just I absolutely don't, just love that cover. I've always eyeballed it and wanted it and saw it on eBay for several bucks, but it's like for 10 bucks. And then a nice fullback mylar too. Couldn't pass it up. Got this one for three just because I wanted to make pay it even ten dollars to the guy I bought what was Spider-Man 2. Uh three bucks, Miss Marvel number two. I figured, you know. Three bucks for an early Miss Marvel. Can't beat that now before the movie comes out. So it's like, yeah. Clean copy, I'll get it for three bucks. Why not? 